Hello everyone, in this video we'll be transforming this space here in our bedroom into a little office space. This used to be a closet, but when we renovated our home we removed the closet since the bedroom already had three other closets on this wall and we didn't need a fourth so we figured we could use the space for something else. So first we want to make this back wall an accent wall by painting it and then using a stencil to create a design. Before I start painting my husband is going to quickly skim coat this back wall to make it smooth. All of the walls in our home have a slight texture so he just had to do the quick skim coat here before we could stencil. So I'm out here trying to pick a paint color for that back wall and we have so many different random cans of paint and we've got some big buckets of paint over there so I figured I'd just mix up my own color for the back wall just to use up some of this. Okay so here's the color I came up with. It's just a nice medium gray color. I think it'll be perfect. So after I painted this whole wall this darker gray color we stood back as it was drying and we just didn't like it. It was too dark so we decided that I'm going to paint the wall white and then we'll use this darker gray color for the stencil and I'm so glad that we decided to do that. It turned out amazing especially since we're going to be doing the darker wood for the desk and the shelves. So it took three coats of white paint to cover up the gray. I'm just using the same white paint that we used for the doors and the trim in the house. It's in a semi-gloss finish. After I did the first two coats of paint, I headed out to the shop to help Jalen cut the wood for the top of the floating desk that he was going to build. Here's the label for this piece of wood so you can see the size and the name and everything. We got it from Lowe's and we've used it for a few other projects in our house. It always turns out great. Here's the footage from when we went to Lowe's and we got everything we needed for this project and some other projects. We had to get a sheet of plywood and we couldn't believe how much plywood is right now. It's just crazy. Okay, so I'm doing the third and final coat of white paint on this wall, and then I'm going to paint on the pre-stain wood conditioner to that piece of wood that Jalen sanded that he's going to use for the desktop. We usually always use this Minwax pre-stain wood conditioner. Before we stain a piece, you just paint it on with a paintbrush and then let it completely dry before you do another quick sanding and then you can stain. So while my pre-stain was drying, I headed back inside to get started on the stencil, which turned out to be a lot harder than we thought it was going to be.
originally I had thought about getting some peel and stick wallpaper for this back wall and getting it in this herringbone pattern, but then I decided I'm going to order a stencil off of Amazon and just paint it on the wall, which after doing this stencil, I kind of wish I would have done the peel and stick wallpaper, but this is a great alternative if you don't want to do wallpaper, but you still want that look of wallpaper. A stencil is a great alternative, and this did turn out really awesome. It just was a little bit difficult to get it perfect, which it didn't have to be perfect, but it was a little more difficult than we thought it was going to be. So we started up in the right corner, taped it up there, and then I painted it on with a foam roller. And the trick is that you have to get most of the paint off of your foam roller before you go and brush the stencil because you don't want to have too much paint on your roller. It will seep in underneath your stencil and it'll just ruin your lines. I'll link this stencil down below because it is a really great stencil if you're looking to paint a herringbone pattern like this. It does turn out really awesome. It just takes some time and some patience. had to get a little container of the white paint with a little brush to do some touch-up paint here and there and then I also had to do touch-up paint on the side walls but now this herringbone pattern is complete. I love how this turned out and that it's just a nice subtle pattern on this back wall. Okay, so now I'm going to stain that wood that we had cut the day before for the top of the desk. I'm using Minwax semi-transparent color stain. We used this for a project out in our dining room and we really loved it. I love the fact that you can color match it to anything and we color matched it to the furniture in our bedroom. We wanted this desk and the shelves to match that. Once I had finished staining, we're gonna let that sit out here and dry while we head back inside and Jalen's going to start building the frame for the desk. He's building this as a floating desk, so he's using a stud finder to mark all of the studs in the wall you want to be sure that you secure your frame into the studs in the wall whether you're doing a floating desk or a floating bench so he had marked on the wood where the studs was going to be he drilled the holes in the wood and then screwed it up onto the wall making sure that it was level Now we're going to head back outside and he's got some more 1x4 boards that he's going to use for the front of the shelves. He just cut those down a little bit, probably made them about a little less than 3 inches. And then he's cutting plywood for the top and the bottom of those two shelves we're going to do above the desk. Thank you. 
So for these floating shelves, he's going to secure them to the wall the same way that he did the desk with the board on the wall and then the two smaller boards on the side. And then that plywood that he cut, one piece is going to go on the top and the second piece on the bottom. And then the board will go right on the front and I'm just going ahead and staining the plywood and the boards. And then once these dry, he'll take them inside and assemble the shelves. And we did decide to have the shelves be eight inches deep. And then our desktop, I think, is about 29 inches deep. Pendant light was a DIY project that I did last year. This is just a small basket from Ross. I cut a hole in the top and I got the pendant cord and bulb off of Amazon. I'll link it down below. So now he's cutting a small hole in the back of the desk for the computer cord and anything else I'll need to plug in. He put the painter's tape down first just to prevent any chipping when he cut the hole. So my office used to be in the small bedroom beside our bedroom, but we just turned that room into to Levi's nursery so now this is going to be my new office space here in our bedroom I don't really need a whole room for an office I just need a place where I can sit and edit videos do voiceovers emails so this is just going to be the perfect area for that and if I ever do decide that I want to move my computer somewhere else then I will just put a small circle mirror where my computer is and this can be a space where I can sit down and get ready for the day fix my hair I can have my jewelry here so this is just a great addition to the bedroom whether I use it as an office or not you enjoyed today's video seeing us turn this used to be closet into a home office and hopefully this gave you some inspiration if you don't have an extra room in your house for an office maybe you can just turn one of your closets into an office I think it's such a neat idea and we just love how this turned out this was such a great use of this space here in our bedroom to have these shelves, this accent wall, and this desk now here in this nook. I do plan on adding a little drawer unit underneath for extra storage, but I don't have too many items here. I just need my computer, my mouse, my keyboard, microphone, different things like that. So thank you all so much for watching today's video. We hope that you enjoyed it and we will see you in a couple days with a new video. Bye.